So we're now going to go ahead and set up our server.js file just to see us connecting to our MongoDB database. And we're also going to obviously listen uh, for connections with Socket.io as well. So we will need to work somewhat on index.html just to include in the JavaScript the uh, Socket.io JavaScript that we need. So the first thing that we're going to do is just play around with um, our um, server. So let's go ahead and just open up our command prompt to make sure that we've got that open and ready. Uh, so as long as we know that that's open, that's fine. We can go ahead and just uh, run our server when we need. And we'll go ahead and just start to write out everything we need in server.js. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a couple of variables. And this is going to be um, requiring in the MongoDB package or, or mod, uh, module that we created uh, or installed earlier using Node Package Manager. And um, we're also going to then do the same for Socket.io. So it's basically a case of creating two variables that we can refer to. The first one's Mongo. So we're going to require in um, MongoDB. It's just basically the name of the package. So MongoDB. OK, so now we want to access Mongo client as part of that. So that's going to allow us to uh, make a connection to the database and, um, and do all various sorts of things. The next is, we'll just call this client, and this is going to be require socket.io, as we've seen, we installed this earlier. And then what we're going to do is something slightly different. We're going to use the listen method and listen on a specific port. This could be absolutely any port at all. It doesn't necessarily matter that much. I'm going to listen on port 8080, and then I'm also then going to access sockets. Now, what we're going to do now is leave that as it is, and we're going to go ahead and just connect here. So um, basically, if we just say, uh, go back to our server JS, so node server JS, when we run this now, now we can see that socket IO is started and it sort of kept this connection running and it's going to wait for clients to connect. So it's going to wait for things to happen here. So now we've uh, done that, um, we can go ahead and actually test this out. So the first thing that we're going to do is go over to our index.html page and down here we're going to go ahead and include a JavaScript dependency. So script and we need to include a source here. Now rather than install, uh, do this locally, what we're actually going to do is we're going to include this from the server itself. So all we need to do is go ahead and supply the server IP, which is obviously 127.0.0.1 because we're working on a local machine, and then that's going to be on port 80. So let's go ahead and do that now. So it's 127.0.0.1 on port 8080. And then that's forward slash socket.io forward slash socket.io.js. So what this is now doing is it's connecting to our Node.js server and it's serving the installed socket.io file. So we don't actually need to include a local version of it. So we can go ahead and just test that this works by refreshing. Uh, and under the network, you can see, oops, it seems to have failed. And that is because we don't have our Node server actually running. So if I was to go ahead and run our node server and then refresh again, you can see that that's now been loaded in. So we get an OK on that. So now that we've actually loaded in Node.js, uh, we can go ahead and access, uh, sorry, we've gone ahead and loaded in Socket.io. We can actually go ahead and access um, any of this information uh, from our, uh, our, our server. And uh, obviously that will be coming from our database, but the, the general gist of things would be to create a variable, and we'll do this all within the code in a moment, um, and this will be io.connect, and uh, we'll go ahead and actually connect to the server that we've supplied, so we know that that's http 127.0.0.1 8080. And that's obviously returned undefined, but it's worked. So now what we can do is if we say socket, we can see that we've got a socket namespace here. We've got a load of methods that we can use um, to actually, you know, check for, you know, data that's coming through and stuff like that. So we now, this is what we're going to use to create the uh, connection to our Node.js server, essentially. So once that's working, we'll go, now go ahead and sort of create a little test just to see that this works on the server side of things as well. So if we go ahead and just bring up our text editor. So under server.js, what we want to do is we want to connect to our MongoDB database eventually. But let's go ahead and create a little test for now. Um, and what we actually want to do is we want to say something like socket dot, um, 
oh no, sorry, we want to actually connect first. So we want to say client dot on client dot on. I remember we're referencing this here. So client dot on we use the on method, which is going to be on connection. We have a callback here or a closure, which is then going to provide us with um, whatever we need to do once the client has connected. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to provide socket in here, and that's going to give us the ability to listen for things like different input, so we can listen for when messages are sent and stuff like that. But for now, what I'm going to do is just console log someone has connected. So we can actually test this out now. Let's go ahead and just kill our um, Node.js server and rerun it. Um, so we've got um, no sort of uh, problems here. It says someone's connected, but let's go ahead and just refresh this page. Go ahead and back to our command prompt, clear that there. So nothing's happening at the moment, but what we're going to do is we're going to keep an eye on what happens when we actually, you know, create a connection in here. So let's keep an eye on this just by pulling this to the side, just so we can go ahead and connect. So there's our Node.js server. We're listening for connections now, remember. So what we can do is we can go ahead and do the code that we did before. So um, socket equals io.connect and then the server. So when I hit that, you can now see that this says someone has connected. So this is how we're managing how people are actually connecting. And remember that this is slightly different because each person that connects is classed as a different client. And we can actually push messages specifically to that client that's connected. So everyone that connects is basically separate. So we all they all uh, keep a separate connection to this server so we've got that covered we know that we can actually you know determine whether someone's connected or not but that's not very useful at this point what we also want to do is wrap this in a connection to our mongodb database so we say mongo.connect and let's just pull this down for now and we'll we'll do this and then we'll insert this in a minute so we want to say mongo.connect and uh, the connect method will take the server and then a callback so we're going to say mongodb uh, forward slash uh, colon forward slash forward slash one two seven dot not dot not dot one and then the name of the database in this case it's going to be chat so we have our callback here and as part of that we have an error or the database sort of object so um, in terms of an error we want to go ahead and check for an error so we just say if error throw error basically that's all that so that will just handle any errors and uh, we can see that in a moment so once we've actually connected to our database, then we want to start listening for connections. So every time a client connects, uh, MongoDB will have already connected, and then we listen for connections here. So this is where we did our console log earlier. This is where we're listening for connections. So let's go ahead and just test this out again, just to see what would ha what will happen here when we run this. Uh, you'll see we'll get, actually get, um, oh, uh, we got MongoDB running. Yeah, we have. Let's cancel that and or close that and then run this again. So what's going to happen here is, um, yeah, there we go. So we've got an error here. So it's thrown this error and uh, failed to connect to 127.0.0.1 and then the port number for MongoDB. So this has failed. So as long as we have actually got our uh, Mongo daemon running, this will work and we can listen for connections and then start to do things. So what we're now going to do is actually test sending data from uh, our uh, index.html page to our server. So we're actually going to listen for input. So uh, let's go ahead and just comment this out. So we'll say wait for input. And this is just for testing really, but we are going to eventually integrate this into part of our input um, when a user actually sends data to us. So we're going to say socket.on. Now this is going to allow us to basically uh, define what uh, name that we give this uh, incoming connection, if you like, or this incoming um, data that's been sent. So I'm going to call this input, and this is the name of my choice. This can be whatever you want. And the callback is going to contain the data that actually gets sent. So if I do a console log on data, we can go ahead and monitor how this works. So let's go ahead and restart our node server. So that's all working. Let's head back over to our browser, and let's go ahead and just reset this. So we've now connected. You can see things are going on here. Uh, sorry, now we're connected. What we can now do is we can actually push a message to the Node.js server. So we're going to go ahead and use the emit method. So I'm going to say socket.emit. And what this is going to allow me to do is emit, 
emit input and then I can go ahead and pass whatever I want into this. So I'm going to pass an happen just to pass an object. I'm going to say name Alex and message hello. Now remember this looks a bit like what we did earlier with our MongoDB database and this is what makes things perfect. What we can actually do is put this straight into our database if we wanted to. So eventually we're going to be taking this input that's sent and pushing it into our database. I'm going to hit enter here. Um, that's basically sent that and you can see um, we've now got name, Alex, message, hello. So we've sent the data from our client to our Node.js server. So we now know that within our server.js file, we've got a, a sort of waiting for input ready to actually build into our you know proper application. So now that we've done that, we may as well go ahead and actually create the functionality to insert this into our MongoDB database. So we'll sort of wrap this up with actually validating this data and then going ahead and actually putting this into our database so we can actually see this now transferred over to our database. So once we've got some input, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and actually grab the data that we have from this data object here. So let's go ahead and create some variables. So the first one's going to be name, and that's going to be data.name. So remember, we're passing a JSON object or, or an object in, um, which is then going to allow us to grab name from data. And we also have message as well. That's data.message. So what we can now do is we can go ahead and uh, insert this in. So let's come up here a little bit. Um, so what we do is once we've connected to our database, um, we want to go ahead and actually obtain the, coll uh, the collection um, we already have. So what we're going to do is uh, inside of here, we're just going to create a variable called col, and that's going to be the database collection, and that's db dot. So we're using this db here, db dot collection, and then we define the name of the collection. We know that's messages. So remember earlier when we looked at the MongoDB server, we created a collection called messages, and we were just playing around with inserting some data in. So to insert this, it's very straightforward. We just say col dot insert and then we can go ahead and actually define what we want to insert. So I'm just going to say name, name, message, message, and that's fairly straightforward. Um, what we then have is a callback as well, and we can check for an error as well. We don't really necessarily have to do this, but I'm just going to console log inserted. So we're going to now test that that works. So what we need to have open is, or we're going to need to restart our uh, Node.js server. We're also going to need open our browser, and we're also going to need open our um, database as well. So at the moment, um, you can see, oops, we need to go ahead and start this. Oh, it is. Um, there we go. So sorry, that I don't know why that happened. Okay, so we've got nothing in this messages um, collection at the moment. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of this. So what we now would do is we can go ahead and emit this. That says inserted. So remember, we console logged inserted. Now when I do db.messages.found, that's now put that inside of the database. So we've got a name and a message now stored. Perfect. So we've actually done what we need to do. We've connected to our Node.js server. We've then connected to MongoDB, and we've then inserted that data. So the last thing to do is just a little bit of validation, well, you know, sort of before we forget. And we're going to use a regular expression basically just to check that there is no white space here. Uh, so no, you know, d dummy data can be inserted. Um, so I'm just going to create a white space pattern here. And you don't need to do this if you're not worried about people's names being blank or the messages being blank. But, you know, you probably are. So we're going to create a regular expression here. And we're basically just going to check for um, spaces and blah, 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 blah. Um, and uh, or white space uh, within what we're testing. And um, what we're going to do here is we're going to say if something else, something else, in here is going to be the test. So we're going to test this. So we say white space pattern dot test, and we want to test name or white space pattern dot test message. So if any of them test true, that basically means that we then have you know we don't want to insert the data so we're going to console log um, incorrect or something like that or 
invalid. That makes a little bit more sense. Eventually, what we're going to do is push this status to the client to then go ahead and um, and show it in our little status area. Um, but otherwise, what we want to do is then go ahead and insert our message. So there we are. Perfect. So let's go ahead and just test this out. Um, we've created our white space pattern. We've created our tests for these. Um, let's go ahead and just check this actually works. So let's open this and there. So that works. That inserts it. But if, for example, the message is blank, it says uh, inserted. Ooh. Uh, of course, we didn't restart our server. That would help a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and it says invalid. So we know that that's an invalid um, message because it's empty. And the same with name as well. If that was empty, we would also get an invalid message. But if we fill them both in, we get inserted. And then we can just cross back over to our database, and we can see that uh, these messages have been inserted, ignoring this one here. So let's go ahead and just remove them for now. We don't really need them. Okay, so now that we've done the validation, that's it. We have, you know, done everything we need to do. There's still a little bit more work to do on here, and uh, there's a lot of work to do on our actual index.html file as well in terms of actually, you know, handling messages that come back so we can actually use our chat. So in the next video, we're going to hook up the text area to allow us to actually enter a message within our chat client and send it to our Node.js server using Socket.io. And uh, this won't appear in our sort of chat area, but what we will achieve is uh, a bit more of, you know, functionality. We don't have to use the console within our browser to actually send messages. Uh, so we're going to hook this up with um, the functionality uh, in here.